Many of you thought that when we get out of the January transfer window, then the transfer news will cease. No way. It will never cease. It never cease. Transfer news never ceases. It keeps boiling. It keeps coming in through. And here at the Rokani Media Football, if at all we find something credible from a credible journalist, we decide to bring it up to you. And today, David Austin has gone ahead and revealed us, has revealed to us Declan Rice's asking price. Why are we doing this story? Because Arsenal has really put up Declan Rice as its marquee signing in the summer of this year. That is, 1st of June to the 30th of September. Is it first? I think to the 1st of September because it's always a three months summer window. They want to land Declan Rice at Carrington. And now, the, not Carrington. Carrington is for Manchester United. It's the London Conley. They want to land Declan Rice at London Conley. And they've been told the amount of money they're supposed to pay for this player. We're having a little bit of Jorginho. How it went in through as he trained for Arsenal ahead of their weekend game. And lastly, talking about Kylian Mbappe. Got injured over the weekend. I think, was it midweek? I think it was the midweek. He got injured after missing a penalty and a sitter. Then he was really stretched off the field of play and he's really going to miss out the huge Champions League encounter with Bayern Munich. What does that mean? All that and more into the comment section below. And David remains my name. Good morning. And where are you watching us from? And I am here to launch in this other story that most of you are really eagerly waiting for. Because Declan Rice is one of those that you people really love and smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because the more you subscribe, the more we really get huge in numbers. And hence, growing a family big and beta. Now, Arsenal, towards the end of the general transfer window, went in and made a bid of Moise Quesido because they had found themselves in a situation of only having one central defensive midfielder, that is Thomas Partey. Lokonga had failed to reach the standards. That's why they loaned him to Crystal Palace. Then, El Nini got a surgery, knee surgery, and he's out until the end of the season. So it looked like it was not all that rosy at Arsenal and Ateta was really short of a Thomas Partey backup. What he did was to go in and make a bid for Moise Quesido that was rejected twice. Then he decided to go and bring in a, a stopgap signing known as Jorginho that is really acting as a plaster on the wound. But the big question is, after bringing in Jorginho, will Arsenal go in for Quesido or Declan Rice? The fact is they want Declan Rice and they are really willing to break the bank. Now, if they are willing to break the bank for Declan Rice, then David Austin has gone ahead and retold really them what West Ham think about the player. This time round, they are willing to sell. That's the most important bit. West Ham is willing to sell Declan Rice, but at a hefty price that Arsenal might not find hard to pay for because they are willing to make a bid of £80 million for Quesido. And here is David Austin coming out and retelling us the following that Declan Rice... I think compared to last year, when West Ham had no intention or need to sell and the valuation was in excess of £100 million, the word I'm hearing from within the industry is that £75, £80, £85 million is a realistic figure for Declan Rice this coming summer. Now, is this a lot of money for us? No? I believe it's not. And I'm not... I was not surprised when I saw Arsenal going in for Quesido for 70, 80 million pounds. Do you know why? There is green light at the end of the tunnel that has really gone ahead to increase finances at Arsenal. How? Arsenal, in contention to win the Premier League, they're going to get in more money than they've been earning the previous seasons because in the previous seasons, in the previous three seasons, the the nearest they've made it on top of the table is finishing fifth, and that was last season, but they've been having really Herondas seasons, you get, especially as far as positions are really concerned. Now, that means Arsenal is in the range of close to 500, 500 million pounds. If they win the Premier League, they'll earn like 500 million pounds. Yet, they've been earning close to 380, meaning that they're going to have 120 million pounds more in their income to be added. Arsenal have really been playing the FA Europa League or Champions League. This time around, they're playing the Champions League. If Arsenal goes in the Champions League, they'll be adding close to 60 or 70 million pounds on their income. So, 
Meaning that they should get ready for the Champions League and that's why they want to bring in Declan Rice to really have competitive players in the Champions League. But the big question is, if Jorginho is here, will they go in for Declan Rice? I tell you, yes. Why? Jorginho is a plaster on the wound. Short gap signing, short term signing for Arsenal. They just had no option to do because they thought that Partey needed a backup. And as they're chasing in for Casido, they really saw themselves get an injury of part in the ribs, though he has really traveled with Arsenal to Everton, but he is really he is really a high-risk player, and that's why they brought in Jorginho. So looks like Ateta wants to bring in players who are known who are not nearing their third decade. Because I think this year Thomas Partey is going to be clicking 30 years of age. Not so. Jorginho is already in his early third decade. Grant Xhaka is 30 years of age, meaning that his midfield is really old and he needs to reinforce it with young and fresh blood. The question is, will they go on and spend mud? I believe yes. Why? Arsenal has always been, Arsenal has always been going ahead to spending lots of money. Season of 2019-2020, they brought in Pepe at 73 million pounds. 2020-2021, they brought in, um, I think it's 2021-2022, they brought in Ben White, 50 million pounds. Then they went in for Gabriel Jesus for close to 50 million pounds, meaning that each and every season, Arsenal really didn't go ahead and really spend more money. And that's why they, they went in for Mokalo Modric and made a bid of close to 100 million euros. Though Chelsea came in through and really hijacked that deal and took the player. They went in for Casido for 70 million pounds. That means they are now having the power to spend. And they realized that if you want to go where the big boys are, you need to go all out and really spend big. And that's why they are really doing at a club known as Arsenal. And I believe they are really having an they're really having a plan that these two are really following to read really, it that they really sign in Declan Rice. Now, Declan Rice, you ask yourself, they made a bid for Casido. Are they returning in the summer? Because they're also having Declan Rice on the list. Are they going to bring in two CDMs in the summer? Because looks like Thomas Partey might be one of those one of those liabilities that Ateta is looking at because in his late 20s, he has been really getting injured a lot. That means in his 30s, he's going to really get injured more and more and more and more. And Ateta is really trying to draw out a plan of the next two CDMs he's going to be having at Arsenal. The beauty of having Keisido and Declan Rice at Arsenal is simple. Declan Rice is an out-and-out -out CDM. Keisido can play as a CDM. He can play in a pivot with... Declan Rice as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He can also play as a cam. So that means these two players can coexist in the same midfield. And so as things stand, Arsenal look like they want to really bring in these two. And that means the price is going to be close to £160 million. When you look at Arsenal and where they are going to be next season, They'll need Caicedo and Declan Rice at once. <laughs> they need these two. But will they break the bank to bring in those players? I believe they are because they've solved some they've solved some problems in the general transfer window. They've gone in for Trossard, back up for Martinelli, Jakub Kivio, back up for Gabriel Magales. And um, the third signing has been Jorginho. That is a stopgap signing, meaning that. In the summer, they're going to be looking at a backup for Bukayo Saka. That is a right winger with a, right, a left foot. Then the midfield is really going to be paramount. They need two midfielders to go on and do the needful to back up everything that Arsenal is really doing. Because for the striker, they're really having confidence. Even if they want to bring in another one, they cannot go ahead and really spend in more money. Because Florin Balogan is really doing great at, at Rams. 14 goals this season in the, in the League 1 is the top scorer of... League One, meaning that it's going to average 20 goals this season. So it shows you that Arsenal have no urgency of going in for a striker. Even if they want one, Balogan has already really spotlighted himself in front of Mikel Ateta that I'm the lad. I'm the lad. I'm the lad. Don't think about Valhovic. Don't think, don't think about Vlahovic. Don't think about 
Victor Oshman, I'm here to really score those goals for the club of Arsenal. So it looks like Arsenal might be looking in for three players and those three players might cost them close to 200 million pounds of which Arsenal have that budget because even the previous summer, Arsenal's budget to spend was 200 million pounds and Kroenke had really authorized it out to go. But they never spent all that money, meaning that then the Champions League this time around, they have to spend that money. They have to spend close to 200 or 250 million pounds because they are going to get in more money as far as football is concerned. So I believe they are really going to be at a very, very, very competitive race with other teams as David Austin tells us about this. Now, Austin continued on this story of Declan Rice that it's just the sense you get which can of course change. Maybe it's Chelsea Arsenal toss up for Declan Rice as things turn. Obviously, Chelsea are not yet done. On either Casido or Declan Rice, they'll go in for one. For that, I'm sure. So, Arsenal has to be so much wise on how they're going to go ahead and really execute these deals of Declan Rice and Casido because they want to back up and strengthen that midfield of theirs. Because the three players available are all 30. Even if you talk about El Nini, El Nini is 31. So, they are all grown-up players. So, we are waiting to see how everything is going to go ahead and pan out. Lekonga on loan at Crystal Palace. Will he come out and really show us some flashes that will force Mikel Arteta to bring him back and really trust him in that midfield? I doubt. I believe these five, these remaining months to the end of the season, he's really going to be coping up with the Premier League. And I think he deserves one more season at Crystal Palace to really develop into that player that Mikel Arteta would love. And I think after that season, I think you can say bye-bye to Thomas Pate, you can say bye-bye to Jorginho, you can say bye-bye to Grant Xhaka, and obviously get in these young blood players that you really believe can get the job done and dusted at the club of Arsenal. So that's it about Arsenal. They've been told the selling price or asking price of Declan Rice, and they are all out seated there trying to put themselves in a position of whether to dish out that money, but I believe they have it and they'll dish it out. So, let's go to Jorginho. Jorginho, for the very first time, we've gotten some photos coming in from the Arsenal training ground on Asladan Conley. Him personally training with his fellow Arsenal players. And this is what we saw from the London Conley. That is Jorginho training at London Conley with his fellow players of Arsenal. And this is him and Martinelli tussling it out for the ball at London Conley. And he is really looking sharp for the game against Everton that's going to be played today at Goodson's Park. Then Jorginho trying to do a pass. Obviously, good player. And obviously, trying to do it out or work it out with Eddie Inketia, the man who is really firing in goals like no other for the team and club of Arsenal. So that is Jorginho for you, a man that is expected to start today ahead of Thomas Partey. However much Thomas Partey has been included into the squad traveling to Everton, I believe... It's going to be Jorginho's day. Jorginho is going to be his day, not so? So, let's wait and see what's going to happen. As you know how we do it each and every time there is a match day. All a match for Arsenal. Match day live. We give you the build-up. Then the match reaction, player ratings, manager's reaction. And I think for the very first time this year, all this month, you're going to bring in, we're going to be bringing you five things we've learned from that game of football that has really gone ahead to end. Not so? So that is Jorginho for you. And after Jorginho, I think, Arsenal fans, you are 100% occupied. Not so. Let's travel a little bit and go to France of, and see out one of the hairs of Ronaldo and Messi's clown or clone, crown, that is Kylian Mbappe. Now, we are having a sad story coming in from France that Paris Saint-Germain now confirmed that Kylian Mbappe will be out for around three weeks after injuring his thigh. Mbappe will miss Champions League first leg against Bayern Munich on 14th February. Now, I now know why Chelsea, sorry, I now know why PSG were really dying or desperately trying to get a player called Hakimi Ziyech because they knew that they are on injury away from a very bad season. Never much they're having a TK to lead the line. Messi can play wide right and Neymar can play wide left. You need a player to come in at least to be a backer because Mbappe is a different kind of player altogether. And Bayern Munich will be outside there jubilating that, all right, they're not having Mbappe, their star man, 
let's go all out and really get points for them. That's it. And that's what they are going to go in for as a team of PSG. But it shows you how players that play the World Cup are really going to start getting injured because he has played it so much football from the start of the season league one goes to the world cup plays all the seven games for france until the final and the final was close to 120 minutes that is mbappe for you then he returns is playing for psg in every game i believe he need to be managed very well so that he really manage his injuries but it looks like that's not part of the plan the manager really wants him onto the field of play and hence he really got injured and in that game he missed out on a penalty and a sitter so and then he got injured but there is one positive that you need to go out and really hate about into this as far as Arsenal is concerned relating to clear to Mbappe I think Mbappe has scored 13 goals in the league one but the Arsenal lad known as Florent Balogan is having 14 goals ahead of all those. I believe by the time he returns, then Balogan would have gone ahead to score very many goals because in his last game in the midweek, he scored a hat-trick. <laughs> that is the lad. So, Kylian Mbappe is injured and they have to face Bayern Munich. Meaning that on the 14th, he's really going to be away and we're going to see how PSG is really going to go ahead and really work out or really benefit from his departure or suffer. But the presence of Mr. Neymar, I think... Unless otherwise they lose, that's when they'll come out and say they've, they've missed out Mbappe. But chances are going to be created because Messi and Neymar have a very good connection way back from Barcelona. They know themselves very well, so they will be able to lift up the team. So tell me your thoughts about Declan Rice asking price revealed. Would you want Arsenal to pay close to £75 million or £85 million for Declan Rice? And after signing Declan Rice, would you want them to bring in Kesido too? So, and what are your thoughts about Jorginho and how has trained with Arsenal today? Should he be started ahead of ahead of Thomas Partey, who has traveled with the squad to Everton tonight? I sign out for now. See you later. May the Almighty Lord bless you abundantly. I'm out.